Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to take a deep dive into wet palettes. What are they? Why should you use them? How should you use them? How do you get the most out of them? Hey, let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Wet palettes. So we're going to talk all about it. We're going to hit everything to do with them. But right up at the top, I do want to say, like every hobby tool, it's not absolutely essential when you're in this hobby to use a thing. I personally find the wet palette indisposable, and it's a major, major part of how I work and how I hobby. It doesn't have to be the same for you. So if you find that after you try this or something, it just doesn't work for you, don't feel bad. You're not doing anything wrong. Everybody hobbies in their own way. Okay, now with that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about wet palettes. First off, what is this thing? Well, a wet palette in simplest form is just some kind of container with then some kind of thing that can hold liquid, water, for a relatively lengthy amount of time. That could be anything from as simple as a folded up paper towel or kitchen roll uh, or a sponge or anything like that within some kind of, uh, you know, piece of paper over top of it that is roughly porous and allows some form of osmosis through the water. Now, there are many versions of this thing. Uh, you can, of course, start with a simple homemade wet palette. That's as easy as a Ziploc container and some paper towels. You can make it for literally pennies, or you can go get a kitchen sponge and put it in there and put some paper on top. That's also relatively cheap. I mean, maybe we're up to a dollar now. Uh, and then you just need a little bit of non-wax baking paper for the top. Uh, I, if you're going to use generic paper, I tend to prefer something like Reynolds non-wax baking paper, like the sort of sheets that you used for cookies in the oven. Those are generally perfect. Uh, they're non-stick usually, but just don't get the waxy ones. Uh, or you can use something like what I use, which is the... Uh, the Exemplar from Game Envy. It is my favorite wet palette. I have gone through most major, every major brand's wet palettes, and this is the one I've come to that I really love for reasons we'll sort of talk about. There are also traditional art wet palettes like the uh, Masterson West wet palette. Those are all fine. Uh, but I do have some issues with them, and we'll talk about it as we move through the rest of the individual features. So why is this thing valuable? Well, the wet palette's valuable because there's a bunch of water sitting underneath the paper, your paint is sitting on the paper, and through the magical power of osmosis, very small amounts of that liquid come up and slowly hydrate your paint, hopefully, and this is the key, hopefully matching sort of the pace of evaporation of water out of your paint. And so over the course of a day or a long painting session, several hours, your wet palette will keep your paint hydrated and workable so that you can sit there and happily hobby away painting a miniature for hours without the need to keep wasting paint and having it dry on a traditional dry or well palette. Uh, what is it not? It is not magic. It does not just like you can't put a drop of paint on it and then leave it there overnight with the thing completely sealed uh, and then come back the next day and have that paint be magically perfectly usable or three days later and have that paint be magically perfectly usable. That's not how this works. As soon as you close the top on the wet palette, you have reduced the amount of evaporation significantly. Uh, there's no light, there's no heat coming down on it, it's a sealed environment, it becomes very humid, and now your paint, which if it was hydrating properly with the top off, is going to hydrate really fast, uh, especially if you have hydrophilic paints, which most acrylic paints are quite hydrophilic. Uh, it will then become a sort of watery mess if you just let it sit there. We'll talk about how you can tackle this later on. Okay, first things first, we've got to set up our wet palette. So over on the desk, here's what we're doing. We're going to set up this wet palette. Now, the first thing to talk about here is the sponges. Now, I particularly love this particular uh, sponge from uh, Game Envy because it uses the sort of nylon sponging on one side. So these are kind of half and half sponges. This is the newest version of what they have. I think it's super cool. Uh, this is actually the revolution to me. 
Uh, there's a lot of sponges out there that people will put in these wet palettes. The traditional artist palette just has this ugly yellow sponge, which is very prone to mold and basically is the same stuff as a kitchen sponge. Um, you can get them made out of things like this, where it's nylon or other certain artificial materials, which does reduce the ability of microbes and stuff to find a home in them. And let's be clear, right up top, your number one enemy with a wet palette is mold. Uh, you are leaving standing water just sitting out in the open in your house. So if you have a human environment or an environment prone to mold of any kind, uh, you're going to have to take really, really strong steps to make sure that your palate does not become a moldy, gross mess that will make you sick. Uh, if you live in a relatively dry environment, hey, probably less of a concern, and the wet palate will become infinitely more valuable. Now, one of the things I often see people do is just set up one sponge. One of the neat things, though, about this process is that you can, if you live in a particularly dry environment, double sponge. So this is what I do. My basement is quite dry. So I just often have two sponges in there. And that means I can fill up more water, keep more uh, sort of moisture in those sponges longer. Um, so they feed up through the paper more easily. It allows me to have more standing water uh, up to a higher level in the actual wet palette itself. So that's the first thing you can do to adjust to your humidity. And understanding your local humidity is one of the most important parts about using your wet palette. Is the area you're painting relatively dry? Is the area you're painting in relatively humid? Set it accordingly. If it's relatively humid, a single sponge in low water is going to serve you just fine. If it's really dry, two sponges, lots of water, very, very effective. So find some happy medium in between there. Speaking of the amount of water, this is another thing I often see people go wrong. I look at their wet palette and they have the sponge just kind of like it got near water. It met water one time on a trip out west. No, 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 no. We've got to get that thing saturated. The sponge needs to be completely saturated with water and then you need a good amount of standing water basically up to and equal to the level of the sponge or right below it. You want the sponge and the water level to be, you know, basically right on. Okay. That's how much water should be in your wet palette, because over the course of your painting session, water will evaporate. It's not just going up through the paper into your paint. It's, of course, also uh, just going to be evaporating from the palette itself up into the air in your room. And this is worse if you have very hot painting lights or a lot of light in your area, which we all should to protect our eyes. Uh, so as a result, the more water you have in there, the less often you have to refill it, the more effectively it's going to rehydrate your paints. Now, as we're talking about standing water, we've got to talk about mold. I mentioned it earlier. Let's get into the nitty and the gritty and the gross. Mold is a big problem when it comes to wet palettes, as I said, especially if you're in a humid or a mold prone environment. So what can you do? Well, you can do lots of things. So there are various liquids you can buy, um, like cleaners that you can put in there. This is what I use. Um, this is the antibacterial agent. It prevent, I've never had mold or anything of any kind as long as I've used this stuff. I love this stuff. It's really great. Um, you can also put copper into your water. Um, you can use copper wire or uh, companies will sell little copper um, uh, things you can actually set in your palette for it. You can use, uh, I, 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 you can, I've seen people use pennies. I don't really support it. There's not that much copper actually on pennies anymore. Pennies are mostly made of zinc with just like a thin copper coating around the outside. Um, so I don't know how much that's actually doing. I haven't seen any kind of scientific test. We probably need to get Goober Town on this one to, to do this test. Um, but a, a decent amount of copper in the water will actually act as an antimicrobial agent. Uh, but using something like a drop of dish soap in there can also be a great uh, play, especially if your dish soap is like antibacterial dish soap, that's what you would want. Anything that says like kills 99 million percent of germs. Great. Perfect. Okay. Just a single small drop of that on the base under the sponge before you fill it up will do a good job. Okay. So now that we've got the palette all filled up and ready to go, it's time to talk about paper. Now, two important things when it comes to paper. One, in general, you don't want to use anything that says wax paper on it in general. As always, these are all guidelines. Uh, so as I said, things like baking paper that you would use for making cookies or something like that in the oven is really your ideal thing. You can cut it to size. 
Uh, you can also buy those prefabricated sheets, and some of them are almost the right size depending on your wet palette you make, especially if you use a homemade Ziploc palette. So that's actually just super convenient. Um, the use of wax paper, if you live in a very humid environment, um, that can actually be a, a good sort of trick. So there will still be some amount of osmosis and humidity traveling even through the wax paper. It's not completely waterproof, obviously. It's just mostly waterproof. Um, so I have seen some artists who are in like particularly dry environments, or sorry, particularly humid environments, I apologize, um, use wax paper to good effect. So again, it's about setting it to your local climate to get the best effects. An important note about the paper, it needs to be smaller than the sponge. This is actually one of my biggest complaints with a lot of the paper you get uh, in the sort of hobby uh, space for wet palettes is that many of them are bigger than the sponge itself. This is no good. And it has to be a little bit significantly smaller because as it gets wet, it will actually spread out some and look and, and become bigger as the as the like as the paper uh, loosens a little bit when it when it gets wet, it will grow larger. And so you need to be significantly shorter than the paper when it's dry. That way, as it spreads out, you're not dropping over the edge. This is important because if the paper's hanging out over the sponge, then it's just you're 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 just going to evaporate a ton more water. Your paint will get dry much faster, and the wet palette won't really work. The paper needs to be smaller than the sponge. So important, so vital. So many people miss it. Okay, now that we've got our wet palette all set up, let's get some paint on here. The first thing I'll say is. Just because it's gonna keep your paint working doesn't mean you need to go crazy. In fact, you can do the opposite now. You use, you waste much less paint with a wet palette because you're only putting a few small drops of paint on. That paint is gonna stay workable for hours and hours and allow you to get a lot more out of a lot less. So if you're one who's thrifty like me, a good wet palette can actually help you save money because you don't waste paint as it just dries and dries and dries and dries over again over and over again on your plastic well palette. Once we have all our little drops of paint that we're going to use on the palette set up, we're then going to slowly, and this is my particular method, you might find a different method of working, but I then like to work out from those individual little pools of paint. So I never actually mix in the original pool. I take a drop of the paint, I put it somewhere else on the palette, and then I... Uh, go to the next color or make my mix or thin it appropriately, whatever I'm gonna do. So I'm working always from secondary pools of paint. The original little drops of paint that I put on the wet palette always stay clean, stay original, and allow me to always go back to a nice uh, original base color or tone or whatever, and, and that remains then workable as I make different mixes or something like that without polluting the other colors. This also is sort of the way my brain just works Yours might be a little different, but working from a secondary um, pool, is, if you're needing to mix or thin, is a very important step. If you're just using the color straight, you don't need to worry about the, the second pool of paint. Speaking of thinning, isn't that kind of the point here? Yeah, a little. So this is something I often hear people say, is that by using it on the wet palette, it's already thinning the paint. Well, again, Yes, sort of, but it's not magic, right? So this is a slow process of the osmosis absorbing some liquid up into the paint. If you put a few drops of paint onto the palette and then immediately start working with it within the next 60 seconds, guess what? It has not thinned at all but it has because it hasn't absorbed any real water yet. As you work with it over time, potentially it will become a little more thin. Maybe the equivalent of having a moist brush when you go into the paint. So this can be a way to uh, get your paints a little thinner as you're working over time, but do note how long the paint has sat on the palette will be impactful to how thin that paint is. And as you're working sort of with the top off and with a lot of light, it might not actually be getting that much thinner because if the rate of sort of absorption through the paper is equaling the rate of evaporation, you're probably gonna stay about the same. Now, once you've got those paints somewhere else, thinned, mixed, etc., uh, then we can do the roll, the dab and roll, or the roll and dab. I guess it'd be the roll and dab. But this is a good way to just sort of keep your brush working and sharp. 
Once I've worked the paint and I've got it where I want, I then am gonna roll my brush off and on the palette, wiping away the excess. And then if I'm working with a very liquidy paint, say a glaze or anything very thin, an ink, something like that, I'm then going to dab a piece of cloth or paper towel that sits next to my wet palette to get that excess liquid out of there. This is especially important if you're, you're in a situation where your wet palette has highly hydrated your paint, um, then you want to be dabbing often uh, just to make sure that you get all of that paint, uh, you know, off, or sorry, all that excess liquid out of your brush. Dab, dab, dab. Now I want to end on just some general tips. These are just bonus tips that I found for years of working with my wet palette. First off, don't seal the thing completely at night. Some palettes, like the Exemplar, have a little vent you can actually open at the top. That will do some work to still allow some air exchange and prevent the environment inside from becoming too humid. You can also just not seal the top. You can leave it slightly to the side or something like that. Though I suppose that can be problematic if you have cats or other animals that want to climb up on things and knock stuff around. So, you know, fire beware on that one. But leaving it, uh, the lid adjacent, ajar, open slightly will also help the, the environment not become too humid and over liquidate your paints. Uh, in that case, depending on what your local humidity is, you may actually find you can come back the next day and still find your paints completely workable and ready to go. And you might get more than a day out of them, which is, which is actually then really great. Next up, wash your wet palette regularly. It doesn't have to be every day, but you know, once a week, take that wet palette, dump the water, throw away the paper, whatever you're doing, take it upstairs, get your brush that you use to clean your dishes, get some dish soap, give that thing a good scrubby scrub, rinse out the sponges, put it all back together, refill the water, take it back down. It's just a good process. Again, not only does it help to keep you know mold and other things like that out of there, but it also just helps it not be sort of gunky and gross. Paint sometimes will leak in the side of it, you know, dust from your room gets in there. Don't let it sit there and get gross. Don't, don't be the stinky kid. Don't be the stinky wet palette, right? Just some good cleaning once a week should keep you in proper working order with no issues. As you're working with the wet palette, you do want to make sure you refill your water regularly. I actually keep a little squeeze bottle, which I also wash once a week, uh, next to my uh, area that I can just sort of squeaky squeaky squeeze into the wet palette and refill the water back up to that level to keep it nice and even with the actual sponge. So make sure I'm getting that appropriate level of hydration uh, up through the paint. Finally, and this is a particularly fun one, if your paint does become overhydrated, it doesn't mean you have to throw away the piece of paper or anything like that. What I usually actually do because uh, overnight, oftentimes some of the paints that I use are really, really hydrophilic, and so they will become over liquidated, over hydrated, whatever you wanna say. They become just watery piles of paint. You can though handle that. Um, I take a paper towel, I simply press it down on top of the paint. I press it down on top of that and it simply soaks up all of that excess liquid and water and admittedly some of the paint. Now, usually what you'll have left is not usable. Sometimes it is, um, but it will absorb all that water and then you can keep using the palette without worrying about that very wet paint running everywhere or getting into anything. You can keep using all the space around it without issue. So there we go. That brings us uh, through everything you need to know to be rocking and rolling with your wet palette. Like I said, this the one that I've, you, I'm using and that you've seen in this video is the Exemplar from Game Envy. I really do love this wet palette. I love the sponge design. The paper is really great. Um, everything about it is you know, durable. I've never had any mold issues. So to me, this one's a winner. But you can find whatever works for you, uh, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I will drop a link down below to the Exemplar. They didn't sponsor this video. I don't have any relationship with them. I just really like the product. So there you go. If you liked this, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Don't forget we have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions about the wet palette or anything I didn't answer, drop that down in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer every question asked. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so share this video. That's number one. Number two, you can check out the merch store down there. We've got lots of fun merch. Number three, you want to directly support the channel? Well, there's a Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.